Hello everyone, I want to show you one of my favorite abstract algebra books. It's called Abstract Algebra with a Concrete Introduction. This one is by Beachy and Blair. I really do genuinely love this book. And that comes, I think, with some, I don't know the word, but let me just say this. I have 22 different abstract algebra books, okay? I have 22 different ones. And this is the one that I chose to use to learn um, like basic, basic, I'm talking very basic introductory field theory. So like um, the stuff of polynomials and then, and then some field theory and then, um, yeah, so basic, basic stuff. After that, I graduated to other books uh, and did a little Galois theory. So yeah, so just this is what really got me there. And I had to do that because when I was in graduate school, um, it was expected that I knew field theory, but I didn't. So I had to find a source for self-study. And out of all my abstract algebra books, this is the one I chose. And that's why, to me, um, this book is amazing. So that's why I like it. So it's called Abstract Algebra with a Concrete Introduction. I don't know if that's the best reason to make it a great book. Um, it's a pretty good reason. One thing I didn't like about it is um, the way it did. Um, it does some stuff with equivalence classes very early on that my other abstract algebra book didn't do. And I kind of didn't like that. But... At the end of the day, it's good to really make that connection and think about every element of a set as possibly an equivalence class. And what does that mean, right? So abstract algebra with a concrete introduction by Beachy and Blair, Northern Illinois University. You know, abstract algebra is a beautiful subject. Um, it's something that I, I, I think it might be my favorite math subject. I'm, I'm, it's, 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 it's something that I really love. Integers. Yeah, integers modulo n. There's all kinds of ways to think about that when you're when you're writing the proofs. And I have some videos on some of the proofs, uh, probably from this section. So we're going to look at that in a minute. Just to, I'm, just, I'm curious. We're going to come back to page 28 at some point. Functions. This is like preliminary stuff, which is really good because if you're just starting, you kind of need this beginner stuff. I've spent I've spent a lot of time with this book. Groups, groups, polynomials. Yeah, this is very very good stuff. I found the treatment on polynomials in this book to be better than every other. It's better than every other abstract other book. It's better than Galleon. It's better than Saracino, which I love that. It's, it's just a great. It's extremely good. Commutative rings, fields, structure of groups, and Galois theory. So, yeah, awesome. Awesome book. Let's go to page 28. I just want to look there and see what's up. Let's just take a look. At page 28, integers modulo n. Yeah. So here we have, let's read this together. For example, the congruence classes modulo 3 can be, re can be represented by 0, 1, and 2. So you have 0, so you get negative 3, 0, 3, 6, 9, 1. So you get these here. Note that each integer belongs to exactly one congruence class modulo 3. Cool. Since so the remainder on division by three is unique, right? These are the these are the uh, remainders, right? Pretty cool. Let's go back up here to the beginning. Let a and n greater than zero be integers. This is this is worth trying to understand. The set of all integers which have the same remainder as a when divided by n is called the congruence class of a modulo n, denoted by and there it is, right? That's the congruence class of a modulo n. That's what that is, right there. Okay. The collection of all congruence classes modulo n is called the set of integers modulo n, denoted by z sub n. Thus, and then here we have, right, the congruence class of a modulo n is the set of all x and z such that x is congruent to a modulo n, right? Note that, and then we have this, if and only if a equals b modulo n, yeah, so Really cool stuff. Now, there's some things here that you might be missing in order to like fully understand what um, I just said. So you do need to read, um, you know, more material in this book. Like you do, I, I, you do need to know some stuff, right? So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like, you know, super, super easy. I guess, I guess is my point. Um, it does take some effort. Um, 
I, again, I, I learned this in a, in a classroom. So um, e even though I use this book extensively for self-study, um, I should I should emphasize this. I, I already had a very strong background in abstract algebra, right? So I already had a course, you know, uh, and I was taking another course. I was taking a graduate level course uh, when I used this book for self-study because I, I needed to learn field theory. So... I, you know, I had a math degree. I already had a mathematics degree. I had topology. I had, I had two courses in advanced calculus, complex analysis. I mean, so you know, I already knew a lot of mathematics. And so if you know a lot of math, you can. this is a great book. Like you can read the whole thing. You can probably understand most of it. Um, and it's going to make sense. Um, everything is very clear. I, I would not say this is a hard book by any means. I think you can buy this book and, and use it for self-study and learn everything in it. It's got to give it away here because... Oh, incredible. But I mainly used it uh, for field theory. That was uh, the big thing for me. Um, so yeah, we were doing a lot of stuff in Galois. Like my homework problems were basically like Galois theory problems. And I'm like, okay, I kind of get it, but there's some things I don't know and things I need to know and improve. So I remember like even some of my, uh, some of my assignments that I turned in when I was studying this stuff in grad school, there was an assignment I turned in it was on field theory, and I gave an explanation, and this is terrible, but um, someone took a purple crayon. The grader used a purple crayon, and, um, you know, they marked it wrong. So, yeah, pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. I remember the purple crayon. My friend was talking about that, too, because our homework was graded with the purple crayons. We were like, who, who is this grader? Who is this person who's grading our homework with a purple crayon? And they were like, you know... You don't need to say this. Like, you know, like, I didn't lose any points, but they wrote, you don't need to say this. This is obvious. I'm like, oh, come on. Really? Is it really obvious? Maybe it's obvious to you, but, like, to me it's not because I had to self-teach myself. So, like, like there was something I wanted to use. I don't, I don't remember what it was, but it was, it was like, some theorem or something or some fact. And I'm like, well, can I use this? So I wasn't sure if I could use it. So, like, I, like, reproved it in the proof. I'm like, just to be clear... You know, the way, because I, I like reproving things, you know, I like to really explain everything. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I remember that there was one time in that class where I was using this book where the teacher, he, he passed away now, he, uh, he yelled at us, right? He came out and told us that, you know, we were never going to make it. Um, you know, we were just not writing the quality of work that he expected. I got an A on the assignment, um, and... Uh, I got an A, I think I got an A plus in that class and there was only three other A pluses in a class of 30. So I did good in that class. Uh, in the second class, I got an A. I didn't get back at the A plus. Uh, I didn't deserve it. And, and I'm glad I didn't get it because um, I, I don't think I was A plus material, right? I think I was A material. Um, but yeah, the A plus was a, a pretty, with this guy, with this professor, you know, he was, he actually knew some, some famous mathematicians. This guy, with this guy, he, uh, he only would have gave A pluses to like, you know, two or three students. And that was like a thing he had. Uh, really interesting. Anyways, uh, I'm ranting. Great book. I, I will leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. I recommend it. Uh, these Beachy and Blair people are awesome. Uh, beautiful book. Uh, yeah, keep doing mathematics. Oh, I have courses. Check them out. Mathsorcerer.com, freemathvids.com. And subscribe if you want to. My courses are on Udemy, but use the links from my website, mathsorcerer.com. Um, yeah, I've got course. I have a course on abstract algebra. Okay, so yeah, I have a course on this. Check it out. Take care.